Good morning, class. Good morning. Uh, this morning we are going to carry out pharmacognosy practicals. We are going to carry out three practicals for us to be able to enhance what we've learned in theory. The first practical is going to be identification of medicinal and poisonous plants, where we will show you the various, from our studies of plants, we saw the sources of medicine, so we'll see a few plants that are sources of medicines. We will also see plants that are poisonous, and we'll be able to relate what is the poisonous constituents in them. Then in the second practical, we're going to be carrying out extraction of phytochemicals. These are the various categories of plant chemicals, the alkaloids, the glycosides, the essential oils. We'll be first collecting the plant from the field, then we'll take you through how we preserve those specimens, how we process them, then the various extraction methods. That is what we will do in our second practical. We will have maceration, and all those, we will take you through that. Then in the third practical, we are going to test for the phytochemicals that we have extracted. We will carry out tests for presence of alkaloids in a plant sample. We will also test for presence of saponins. We will test for presence of cardiac glycosides. Yes, and any other phytoconstituent that we may have extracted. So I'm going to take you through the first practical, <coughs> and this is the identification of medicinal plants. This is the first practical, the identification of medicinal and poisonous plants. And here we are looking at various plants that are sources of medicines, or they have uh, poisonous constituents. And our first plant here is Rhizinus communis. This is what is commonly known as castor oil plant. We know that from castor oil seeds, which we have here, we normally get a fixed oil that is very useful for making ophthalmic preparations for constipation. But in this, at the same time, we have poisonous constituents within the seeds. In the seeds, we have two toxic compounds. One of them is a lectin. This is a glycoprotein, as we know. The lectin is known as ricin, very toxic to humans and animals. And we also have an alkaloid within the seed that is known as ricinin. Usually in the extraction of oils, we don't extract those things. But more important is to note that when we extract the oil from these seeds, we use the cake left as manure because of the toxic compounds. And like the other seed cakes that we use for animal feeds, this is used as manure because of the toxic components. The other plant we are going to consider is Merriam oleander. Merriam oleander is an ornamental plant as we can see from the beautiful flowers. This contains uh, cardiac glycosides that we know are useful as medicines for managing cardiac failure or heart failure. But at the same time, in high doses, the cardiac glycosides are very toxic. They are associated with various toxicity in the body, could be in the gastrointestinal system, the central nervous system, or in the cardiovascular system. So in our extraction, we will be seeing how to extract that class of compounds. The other poisonous plant we look at is the Vetia peruviana, which is commonly known as the yellow oleander. We have previously looked at Merriam oleander, commonly known as the pink oleander or red oleander. Then we have the Vetia peruviana, which is known as the yellow oleander, also a source of cardiac glycosides. That as we know, in addition to treating cardiac failure, congestive cardiac failure, high doses are associated with toxicity. Are we clear that far? We are moving on to the next poisonous plant or medicinal plant. And here we have the Senecio species. These are succulent plants. As you can see, these, the leaves are quite fleshy. The plants with fleshy leaves are, known, are what are known as succulents. They are commonly kept in homes as ornamental plants. But something of importance note is that they have phytoconstituents that are very toxic. The ingestion of this results in liver toxicity. So these are what would refer to as hepatotoxic plants. Then another plant is the euphorbia species. What we have here is euphorbia tirucali, 
also known as the pencil cactus. This plant normally has a white latex. Uh, the milky white latex is what is the poisonous component. Even a small drop of this getting into the eyes can result in blindness. So we need to be aware when we are dealing with these plants which ones are toxic. The next plant we look at among the toxic plants is the angel's trumpet. This is the plant angel's trumpet. In some circles it referred to as morning glory. The botanical name is Brugmansia species, specifically Brugmansia suavelens. It contains tropane alkaloids. We covered various classes of alkaloids. So the specific class of alkaloids found in this species is the tropane alkaloids. These are alkaloids such as, could you remind us any of the tropane alkaloids? Atropine, scopolamine, and hyoscyamine. These alkaloids are very useful medicinally, like mydriatic agents in ophthalmic use for management of spastic pain in the GIT. But in addition, in high doses, we know that the tropane alkaloids are very poisonous. Another plant that has poisonous ingredients is Jatropha curcas. This is an ornamental tree that we have seen, especially on the streets of the city. We have Jatropha curcas growing. It usually has uh, some hard, hard kerneled seeds. These are the seeds. And the toxic component in them is uh, lectin. Lectin, as we said, are glycoproteins. The poisonous component in it is the glycoprotein ricin, which has been associated with toxicity. I believe we have seen newspaper or TV reports of children who have consumed these seeds and gotten toxicity. Then the other poisonous plant we have here is Abras precatorius. Abras precatorius is a plant that usually has very sweet leaves because the leaves have glycerin, and it has these beautiful seeds from the fruits of the plant. These orange colored seeds with a black that are usually known as ordinarily as rosary beads because people use them when they are doing the prayers, the rosary prayers. But these seeds are very poisonous. They contain a lectin glycoprotein known as abrin. Consumption of about four seeds is enough to kill a human being. Then lastly, the last plant we look at that is poisonous is Datura stramonia, a very common weed that has been uh, collected in confused to be the nightshade species. We know the nightshade species. The Solanum nigram that we is normally consumed as a vegetable, the managu. At early stages, the plants are very similar. The Datura stramonium leaves and the nightshade are very similar, though so they have been confused and collected, and they result in toxicity, mainly gastrointestinal, nausea, diarrhea, and vomiting, and in very high doses could result in death because of the tropin alkaloid, atropine. Yeah, so that will be it for the poisonous plants. We will now move on to another practical. The next practical we are considering today is extraction methods in pharmacognosy. Here is where we get the phytoconstituents from the plant. And the first step in extraction method is plant collection. This is where you collect the plants either from the wild or from cultivated sources. Once you collect the plants, you press them in between a hard surface. This is a plant press. The reason why we press is to reduce the moisture content in the plants to prevent decaying or fungal growth of a plant specimen. Once we collect it and press it, have it identified to confirm the plant identity, then we prepare such as a herbarium specimen. Of course, with all the description of the plant, who collected, where was it collected, the botanical name of the plant, and the date that it was collected. This, is, this forms a basis for future reference for anything else you're going to do with the plant. Then the plant that we have collected, identified, and prepared a voucher specimen is then dried at room temperature. We avoid drying it in the sun because some of the phytoconstituents get degraded when you dry them in the sun or the dust and everything else that could contaminate. Here are some of the dried plant samples. This is an aloe vera sample. After we dry them, we cut them into pieces, like these are the bags of a plant. 
they have been collected, dried, and now cut into pieces. Then for us to extract, we have to reduce the, the size. This is to increase the surface area for the interaction of our plant material with the extracting solvent. So this is one of the uh, apparatus we use for milling our product so we could grind it to increase the surface area. So from a large bag to get a powder sample and here we have a powder sample which we have milled. Then for us to now extract, we first weigh the plant material. This is a weighing balance that we will weigh this plant material to get the, our beginning point is say so many grams or so many kilograms of plant material which we now expose to an extracting solvent. Our dried, our dried powder sample of the plant, we have weighed it, so we have our starting weight. We can take it through extraction using the various methods depending on the nature of the phytoconstituents. The first method we could use is percolation. Here we take the dried powder sample, we pack it in a column like this one here, then we run an organic solvent through the powder sample material and we, we seal it here, yeah? Then we let it run through. We will keep uh, adding more solvent until what we are getting here is clear. When it's clear, it shows that we have exhaustively extracted the phytoconstituent. Are we clear? Pack the column, run an, an extracting solvent and keep adding until the, the eluent is clear. That shows we have completed. Another method we can carry out for extraction is refluxing. Here we pack the material in the extracting flask. We put our solvent there, then we heat it, and then we let it run for several hours to extract the plant material. This is what we refer to as refluxing. Once we have exhausted, then we will filter the solvent to be left now with our extract as we sh shown here. Then the other method of extraction is uh, soxlet extraction. Here, if you recall, we had the, the cotton cloth that we use. We pack the material, the plant material here in this uh, muslin bag or cotton bag. Then we have our extracting solvent here in, the, in this mortar. Then we heat it, <coughs> we let it boil. Then as it boils, it will be uh, passing through the material and extracting, is that clear? So you have the solvent and the material are not together. You have the material packed here in this column. This is what we've shown with a smaller variety here. Then we have our solvent here. We are boiling it and as it boils, the films will be going to this, interacting with the material and extracting our phytoconstituents, is that clear? So we run it for several hours until we exhaust, then we'll be left with a, a solvent that we don't need to filter now. We normally now reduce it to get a, a smaller quantity of concentrated extract. Are we clear that far? The other extraction method is called maceration. This is where you're using a cold solvent. It could be water if they are polar phytoconstituents or it could be an organic solvent if they are non-polar phytoconstituents. And here you, you put your plant material in the flask, extraction flask, then you put your solvent of choice, whether it's hexane or water or dichloromethane. And you will be stirring at intervals. You carry out the extraction for most of the time up to 48 hours. So you will periodically be stirring, maybe every eight hours you stir to ensure that there is good uh, interaction of your solvent with the plant material. After that period of about 48 hours, you now filter. You have exhausted the extraction, so you filter your, your material and here you get the, the filtrate. This filtrate now consists of your extracting solvent and the phytoconstituents that you have extracted now, which we will be reducing later on in a rotor evaporator. Another method of extraction is decoction. This is like hot maceration. You do the same thing as we have done in, maceration, in cold maceration. So you put your plant material in an extracting flask. 
put the solvent of choice, but in this case now, you heat the material. Yeah? So this would be useful for materials that are thermostable. They are not destroyed by heat. Is that clear? So from our studies of various phytoconstituents, we saw those that were thermolabile, easily destroyed by heat, we use cold maceration. Then those that are heat stable or thermostable, we use decoction or hot maceration. Then we saw that in the plants, we could have essential oils or volatile oils. These are oils that give the fragrance of the plants. Very useful in the perfumery industry. We are also using them now for inhalation, yeah? for respiratory issues. And these are, because they are volatile, that means they evaporate. So we extract them through distillation method. This is the apparatus for extracting the essential oils. It's known as a Clavenger-like apparatus. This is how we set it up. We put our plant material here in the extraction flask and the solvent, and then we boil it. Then the vapors of the, sol of the solvent with the extract will go into here, the condenser, where it condenses, and now we collect the oil, yeah? So distillation method, because the oils are volatile. Are we clear that far? We can use it for such materials such as eucalyptus. We know about eucalyptus oil, it's a volatile oil, so it can be extracted through this material, pack the eucalyptus material, put the extracting solvent, then boil it, then have a distillation and collect our oil above the solvent because the oil will be lighter, right? Yeah, then after we have extracted the various constituents, we, saw we could have the filtrate or in the case of a succulent, we have that solvent that has both the, the organic solvent and the extracted material. We need to reduce the volume to a manageable level, yeah? So this is the extract we got from our percolation. Then we need, to, because this is a mixture of both the organic solvent and the phytoconstituents. Our interest was to extract what? The phytoconstituents. So for us to get the phytoconstituents, we need to reduce the volume of this. How we reduce that volume is using a vacuum rotary evaporator. This here, this setup here is a vacuum rotary evaporator. This is the place where we heat, we put water and heat. Then it uses a pressure pump that gives the vacuum. This is a round bottom flask, what we commonly refer to as a reducing flask. So you put your solvent on one side, yeah, in the water, then you heat the water. So it will be, the vacuum will be, it's rotating the, the, whole, mix, the whole setup then the extract will be taken here into the condenser and you collect it here. We have, you collect the solvent here and you are left with a smaller volume of your extract. Is that clear? So the main role of the rotary, vacuum lottery evaporator is to reduce the volume of the extract. So you put your extract here, it's a mixture of solvent and the plant material. Then you rotary evaporate it, you collect your solvent here. Usually works for organic solvent. So you will do this for a water extract. This is for organic solvent extract. Are we clear? For water we usually use spray dry which we will do at another time. Not now. Use the volume of your extract on the uh, vacuum rotor evaporator. This is your final product. This is what we had initially as the extract. We have reduced the volume, so we have removed the solvent, and this is our final product. The third practical we are going to conduct today is the test for phytochemical constituents in the plant. The common one, that those are the tannins, the saponins, the glycosides, and the alkaloids. For the tannins, as we recall, we had two varieties of tannins. They were the hydrolyzable tannins and the non-hydrolyzable tannins. And we know that when we react them, they will give different color reactions based on whether they were hydrolyzable or non-hydrolyzable tannins. Then we will test for saponins. Saponins, as we know, are those that give a, a plant constituents that are soap-like property. Yeah? They form in water or they form a, a froth when you shake them in water. 
and they also hydrolyze red blood cells. So we are going to be having, to be carrying out a test to show if a plant sample has saponins. Then the other phytoconstituents we are looking at are the glycosides. There are various categories of glycosides, so mainly we will look at the cardiac glycosides. Again, we will use the, the color reagents. You recall the nitroaromatic compounds that we react with cardiac glycosides, especially of the cardinolite type, to give the various colors. So we are going to be doing that. And lastly, we'll test for presence of alkaloids. Alkaloids, we know they give various colors when you react them with various reagents. So this is going to be a hands-on practical. We are going to be having the technologists working with the students so that it's a hands-on and you can see exactly what happens. Actually, it's test, test for tannins, yeah? Test for tannins, and this is how it is done. You weigh two grams, eh? And we're taking a lot of time. It's still water. Magic. So, add distilled water. Then you warm. You warm for two minutes. In a water bath. Then you cool, after that you cool, let it cool, just place it in cold water. Hmm? Cool. So when it is cooling, we can do the other test which is very fast, test for saponins. Actual test for saponins, you weigh two grams, which we have already weighed, two grams of your material, yeah, put distilled water, if you have already put the distilled water, then shake vigorously, shake this one, shake this one vigorously, shake it vigorously. Yeah, that's okay. So, you can see this, this frothing, eh? so it's frothing test. So if this one persists for five minutes, then it shows that our plant material has saponins. So that one is true, you can put it there. So this is what you get as your results. You can see this frothing. If it persists for five minutes, then a plant has saponins. So after cooling now, filter that. Filter. Just get this. Just get this. Filter. Is here. Use cotton wool. Small piece of cotton wool. Very small. Eh? A small piece of cotton filter dead add ferric chloride this is five percent aquas Ferric chloride. Just add a drop. So 
you you have seen the color what is that color hmm? so this is what you, you obtain after adding ferric chloride so it shows our plants as tannins okay so you can either get this color or this color different colors actually from different plants because different plants have different tannins is that okay thank you uh, now the test that we are about to do is test for glycosides so in the test for glycosides our starting material raw material is called a juga remota which is a known plant in kenya so the reagents that we need is 70 percent ethanol we also need distilled water we also need 10 percent sulfuric acid and a strong solution of lead subacetate and then finally we also need uh, some test reagents where we are going to include uh, the one two three four five dinitrobenzoic acid plus uh, kong sulfuric acid as we proceed you'll get to know them so we first of all begin by getting a plant material and weighing two grams which uh, our colleague has weighed two grams so you get your two grams of a juga remota and then you put in your boiling tube your boiling tube this is the boil get the boiling tube so and then you uh, you measure 70 10%, 10 ml of 70% ethanol, she can hold for you. Mm -hmm. Here it is. This is 70% ethanol. Mm -hmm. So measure 10 ml. So as he's doing that, the water bath is heating because they are going to use a water bath. So you add the 10 ml to to the plant material in the boiling tube. You shake initially, shake, okay? And you extract, you, you, you boil on a water bath for about two minutes. So during these two minutes, you'll be shaking continuously to allow com complete uh, extraction As he, is boil, uh, as, as he is boiling for two minutes, the next step that we need to prepare for is filtration process. From here on, we shall filter using a uh, filter paper and uh, shall filter. This is how the filter paper looks like. So we have, this is the filter paper. We have made it in such a way that it becomes conical. So we fit it there. And then we are going to filter in a, in this container here yeah. it's okay so this is where you shall filter you can continue again okay so so he's filtering so you notice that when he's filtering the filtrate is streaming from upwards so you obtain the filtrate. So the next step after filtering, as it is filtered, you are, go you are going to add 10 ml of distilled water. So please measure 10 ml of distilled water as it's filtering. So there is an excess, so you pour off here. Remember, you need to practice good lab uh, procedures, so you are not supposed to return it back. Yeah, good. So by now, it should have finished the filtration process. You can assist him to remove it. Just remove it and put it aside. Yes, yes. Put it. put it there. Went down there, it's okay. Good. 
So it's going to add 10 ml of uh, distilled water and shake. So the next step from there on is going to add five drops of lead sub strong lead subacetate solution. The solution is here. So just show them the solution. So you can you can get your five drops. So be careful. Make sure there are five. So keep on shaking. So you notice our solution is turbid. So that means that uh, there is some reaction going on. So we need to remove the excess lead ions. So we can we, we do that by adding 10% sulfuric acid. So uh, you can add 10% sulfuric acid continuous until you can just you can you don't need to to use a uh, you can just add continue without using the pasture pipette just add continuously just hold it up like this so that the, the rest can view add continuous as you shake just add it's okay it's okay add more you add more again add to excess you add excess as you shake yes add again Yes. Let's continue. So you notice now it is now becoming clearer. Let's see. Let's see whether it has. Yes, at least the. It is becoming clearer, more and more clearer. So this is good enough for us. Then from there on, you filter. This time we, we can filter using our cotton wool. So you'll filter, you'll filter using cotton wool. Let's use a clean container. So you can filter using this one. Here is cotton wool. So just filter. So this filtration process allows us to get a more clearer solution without debris. So from there on, uh, as she's filtering, uh, we have a separating funnel on that side. You can, you can see. So this is our separating funnel. So in this separating funnel, so the filtrate is supposed to be put in this separating funnel. So by now I think it has finished filter. Good, you can put it aside. So now I'll help you. So now this is our fi fi final filtrate. You can decide to filter twice, but uh, I've decided to do it once because we had done it earlier on. And then after this, now you're supposed to extract successively using chloroform. So uh, please get some chloroform and measure two ml, you can hold this one. So move tactfully. So put that one in the in the bottle and then you, you, you measure two ml. And and then that's two ml. Aha, uh -huh, good. It's okay, just, is it 2 ml? It's 2 ml. So you have done some good work. So you can hold, it. so please put, put your 2 ml chloroform inside there. So just give it to him. So you're supposed to hold like this. Okay. And extract like this. So let, let her do it and then you, you will you'll empty it inside there. So just shake like this continuously as you're, as, as you're turning this, uh, yes, like that. So that's the, 
that's the extraction process. So we have used 2ML, so you repeat that so that you can have two successful repetitions, okay? So the first time you, you extract, okay, okay, that's good enough. So now after that, notice that now you have your, now you have your separating funnel, it has the, the extract part that was filtered, and then the chloroform part is on the lower part. So it is the lower part of the chloroform that we are interested in with. So the lower part of chloroform is now what we are supposed to remove and empty on a petri dish. So where are our petri dishes? So we have two petri dishes in place. These are the two petri dishes, that one and that one. So she can hold that one. So after the extraction process, so these two petri dishes, you tap like that. So you remove the, this part. So I'll help you, it's a bit tricky. So you remove, you can see. So you only, you only get the, the part with chloroform. So let's get the other Petri dish. Good, that's okay. So now, after this, now you need to evaporate this chloroform so that now you're left with a residue on the Petri dish. So I'll, I'll use our, our source of heat here just to evaporate so that you can put place on top. So you can do that or you can decide, you can decide, because since chloroform evaporates faster, you can decide to fan using a book or anything like that. For, for instance, you can use this, this book to fan like this, okay? So, that is the process, just hold. So you keep on checking to see the chloroform as a, it's almost dried up. So now, as we are waiting for the chloroform to evaporate, we have our test reagents for this test. So we have the KEDE test, and we have what we call, we have the KEDE test and we have the Kilekilian test. So, for the KEDE test, we need 90% of alcohol. It is somewhere here. This is what we need. And then we need two drops of 2% 3,5-dinitrobenzoic acid. So, here it is, the dinitrobenzoic acid. And then we need 20% sodium hydroxide solution. These are 20% sodium hydroxide solution. So now, these three, using droppers, using droppers, we shall, we shall get our petri dish, which is already dried with the residue, and then put each and every drop here, so that now we mix, slightly mix, so, so that they are mixing, and then the end result, the end result should be a purplish color, okay? which is a positive for glycosides. On the other petri dish, we are going to test as it's drying. We are going to test using the Kilekilian test. Here we usually use glacial acetic acid and conch sulfuric acid. So my brother will do this test for me, the, the KD test. So usually you do it on a white piece of paper so she can hold, she can do, you can do the holding, so you can be at the center, you can just come here. So let's put our 90% alcohol, get an alcohol. So using that dropper, you can use that dropper. Let's use this other dropper, this is for 90% alcohol. Let's rinse, let us rinse our droppers thoroughly. You can rinse using our hot water. Yes, you can rinse using a hot water since you don't need it. Okay. Okay, let's use, you can also use. So, you can use this. Get a 90% alcohol. Okay. 
just put a drop at the center. Okay. So now, after putting that drop, you're supposed to shake all over the place. Make sure it doesn't fall. That's okay. Then the next thing, you add you add a 2% 3,4-dinitobenzoic acid. Use this one. This one that we have already rinsed. Okay. Use this one. Again, put about two drops. Okay. Put about two drops on top of that one. One, two, just, okay, that's good enough. Then finally, you're supposed to add your 20%, you're supposed to add your 20% sodium hydroxide. Remember always when you're using that, you keep on rinsing so that you don't contaminate your, your reagents. So just add a drop, just a drop at the center. Don't, don't, don't shake, just add a drop. Yes. So when you give it time, you notice an isopurpurnate color. Are you seeing it? Yes. Are you seeing the purple color? So it, it might not be clear for you, viewers there, but uh, from them, you, you see the isopurpurnate color. If you give it more time, the color will form a residue and it will stick, okay? So that's the positive test for glycosides. So now we are doing the other test. That is now the Kilakilian test. That was the KEDE test. So for the Kilakilian test, let's use a, a fresh. So you are going to use you are going to use 0.4 ml of glacial acetic acid with traces of ferric chloride. Here it is. So you're going to put two drops, two drops of that one on the edge. Yes. Use this one. Put about two drops. Yes. It's okay, put, put. So you're, supp you're supposed to hold like this and then put Put two to three drops and then you shake. So, it's okay, you can pick another drop, pick another one. So this is this this is a very tough exercise. That's okay. So you sh you shake all over. So now the trick here is that now when we want to add conch sulfuric acid. So when you're adding conch sulfuric acid, the acid should be put on one end of the, of the petri dish on the edge like this. And then where it meets this uh, glacial acetic acid, it forms greenish brownish color, which is a positive color for this, for this case. So now our conch sulfuric acid is somewhere there. So that's a conch sulfuric acid. So you, you hold a conch sulfuric acid there like that. So you, you hold it in a slanting manner. Just hold it like this. Okay, let me do it for you. So you hold it and then you put it on the edge like this. So where the two meet, they form a, a brown color. Have you seen it? Are you seeing? Just be careful. I see a greenish brown color. Yes, yes. Just look at it. Are you able to see yes. here? The boundary. Yeah, the, it forms a boundary. Notice that our extract is yellowish, so sometimes the colors might mix a little bit, so that's why you get the variation. But the inference is greenish brown, greenish blue color. Okay? So this is a positive for the Kilekilian. So that concludes that uh, that concludes that a jugary mortar contains glycosides, and uh, these glycosides have responded positively for KD test and Kelekilian test, just as the lecturer was explaining. Thank you so much for this time. So.
the test we are going to do today is test for alkaloids. So for alkaloids, we know one plant which has alkaloids is Datura stramonia. So we have Datura powder here from the leaves. And we also have Datura seeds here, you all know them. But for this case, we are going to use the Datura powder. So uh, the students are going to weigh two, they are going to weigh two, two grams of the Datura powder, which I think they have already done. After that, they are going to put in a boiling tube, you can put in a boiling tube. That's good. So you measure 20 ml of 10% sulfuric acid. 20 ml of 10% sulfuric acid. This is 10% sulfuric, that's okay. So you use this one, the, measure, the large measuring cylinder. So remember to be careful when you're working with reagents in the lab. They can be hazardous. So in case you are using very strong, uh, very strong solvents, it is advisable that you put on your gloves. So shake, shake thoroughly. going to warm over a water bath, going to warm for five minutes as she's shaking. So meanwhile, as she's, as she's warming, that one, uh, his colleague is going to, assist to, to prepare for the next step, where we're supposed to filter, to filter, and then after filtering, you're supposed to test a portion of the filtrate using mares. So maybe you can prepare the filter funnel so this is the filter funnel. There is there goes the this is the filter paper. It's put there. So keep on warming. Keep on warming. So you need a test tube. Do you have a test tube? Yeah. So you need two of them. So you can have one. So you can look for another test tube, which is there. Let me pick for you. So remember, you're going to test a portion of the filtrate. Okay. So uh, after the five minutes have elapsed, after the five minutes have elapsed, you filter. It's okay. You can, you can filter. The five minutes have elapsed. So the filtering process takes time. But you can see, please show them that it is filtering. So you can see the filter is being obtained from down there. Then after that, after the filtration process is complete, mm -hmm. let's see. So after the filtration process is complete, he's supposed to get to put this one in a to get a portion of this one in a test tube. So transfer a portion to a test tube. Yeah, and that's good enough. Give her to put on the side. So get a portion of this. Yeah, you can use this, use this test tube. Get a small portion of this. Okay, the small portion.
That's okay. So, so we are going to test for alkaloids using this portion. So we are going to use a, we are going to use a Mayer's reagent. If we see a white to Buffy precipitate, we proceed with the. That is an indication that uh, what we have contains alkaloids. But we now proceed to the next part. So you can have this one. So you can add this to check to see whether you have a white to Buffy precipitate. How many drops? Put two to three drops. You can see if you hold this like this, you can see buffiness. Just have, have, a, hold, have a look at it. Can you see buffiness? It's not very clear. Let's give it time. Let's add more. Hold this. We shall proceed to. Let's proceed. Yes, sir. So, so uh, it is there, it's very small, but it can be able to be seen. So, once the white to buffy precipitate is achieved, you now are supposed to to make the rest of the solution alkaline. So, remember, this is where you got a portion. Eh? So you're supposed to make the rest of the solution alkaline. So this is the remaining solution, isn't it? So when you're making alkaline, so you're supposed to add, so, so this one you can put, you can put there. So when you're making the rest of the solution alkaline, you, you use ammonia, dilute ammonia, which is here. So first of all, before you use dilute ammonia, sorry, you put, uh, you use a pH paper, can remove one, just a small piece, and put inside to see the color. So you could just put it inside. So once, if you see this, the pH paper, this one is pink in color. So we need to make it alkaline. So once it's alkaline, it will, on the pH paper, it will indicate an alkaline color, greenish. So this is the ammonia solution. So you can add continuously. There is no formula. Let's add, add to excess. It's okay, continue adding. As you shake, add and you shake, add and you shake. So each time you add, you, you test using this one, the filter paper. Let's add this one. So you keep on adding. So add in excess, just add, continue adding. So keep on adding, Kabisa. Yes. So, so you keep on testing. So remember the color we want to achieve is a, uh, so okay, add. So the, okay, watch it up because it's a demonstration. Eh? So you keep on adding. So you keep on adding again. Okay, you can add that one. Add again. Add to excess, Kabisa. Okay, continue adding. The main aim is just to make it alkaline. Just a little bit. So uh, let me help him. So, so eventually, eventually, because we we have to add up to becomes excess. So the color we want to achieve is this color, which when you check on the pH paper, gives you an alkaline pH. Okay. So after this, you are supposed to filter. So you can filter this one. You can filter somewhere. This has distilled water. I can filter over here. Using that small. Mm -hmm. So 
So after the filtration process, you're supposed to extract using chloroform. Again, we'll use a filter funnel, a separating funnel. So that's, that's, we can use that one, that is enough. That's, the filtrate is enough. Okay, because we're using a smaller funnel, we will continue filtering, but uh, let's use a larger funnel for this work. So we can filter all of that one, everything, pour in everything there in one motion. That's okay. So after the filtration process, After the filtration process, you now extract this one using 2 ml chloroform, so you can get. So first of all, you put the extract there, and then you can measure the 2 ml chloroform. Remember how we are measuring it? So let's be a bit fast. Good. Then after that, you put there. Mm -hmm. That's okay. That's okay. So. So you put the 2 ml there and you extract. So just like the glycosides we, we were doing, in the alkaloids you extract again successfully twice, but you do that by solving the filter funnel. And then you remember it will form two layers. Remember it will form two layers. Just hold load there. It will form two layers. Let me help you. Remember, it will form two layers. So there's an upper layer and the lower layer. So we're interested in the low, the lower layer. Okay? So we're interested with the lower layer. So again, we'll extract like that. Okay? Then, remember, we now have our two columns. So we need to separate the columns. So this is our, our two petri dishes but we are going to use one instead this time. So you put it on a clean surface, and then you remove that upper part. Okay, okay, okay. Continuously. Okay. Remove that upper part. Okay. So it does not get removed very well. So let's be careful. So you remove it carefully. So now you have this part that is left. See it is a clear part, the one with chloroform. So now this is what supposedly contains the alkaloids. Okay? So we now warm it for about a minute so that the chloroform can evaporate. So after it has evaporated, you are supposed to add, to do now the test. So for the test, you are going to add 1% sulfuric acid. Then we add drangent of reagent. So once we add these two, if, I get, if we get a pink orange coloration, orange, if we get an orange red precipitate, that means that's a positive. So let's give it time for it to cool. Remember this is chloroform. Yeah. So you keep on checking. So when you're doing this, the residue is supposed to form the lower part. 
So it is a very tricky part. Okay. So now our, our, our chloroform has evaporated. So use a white a white uh, pad or place. So you hold this one. So you're going to use this white part. So you hold like this. So now you're going to add one percent sulfuric acid. So you can get this one. Add you can add one drop of one percent sulfuric acid. Okay. Okay, add another one here. Okay. So, okay. So it will be a positive. So, mm -hmm. so from there on, you're supposed to add Drangendorf reagent. So let's get a cleaner pasture pipette. So you just add one drop to where you had placed the other one drop. So, so you put it there, the other one you put it there, that's enough. So you're not supposed to shake. So after adding, you'll notice droplets of red-orange precipitate at the center here. Can you see them? Yes. Because when you shake, they disappear. Okay? Maybe from a distance. You can put it, but you can be able to see them. Not really. So that shows, you can confirm that it's a positive for alkaloids. Okay? Yes. Have you seen it? It is there. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. That's the end of this uh, test for alkaloids. Thank you. <laughs>